Welcome to Keeping In Sync with Microsoft 365 for the week of the 25th of April. Now, first I want to start with a quick disclaimer. As often in these updates, I give the, the dates of when something's gonna come up or rough dates. Um, however, sometimes these dates may change. Now, I don't necessarily do an update for those. I just continue on like everything's perfect and wonderful. Uh, but it is important to note that if you're not seeing a feature, then yeah, it may have been pushed back sometimes by weeks, sometimes by months. Um, the other reason why, why you might not see a feature is that your, you may have organizational specific um, settings in your environment um, that may prohibit them from um, showing up. So don't blame the messenger. Not that anybody has, but I just thought I'd put it out there, hence why it's a disclaimer. Now, starting in apps and services. Finally, uh, many, many months after the iOS app was released, in fact, well over a year, um, it is now coming to Android. Uh, it is expected to roll out late April to early May. Um, however, we're in late April already, um, and the link that they provided comes back with an error at this point. So hopefully um, in the next few days, we might see it live, but great to see the Lists app finally coming to Android. Now, Loop Components, if you haven't heard already, um, are live interactive collaborative objects that you can embed in Microsoft Teams chats and now also in emails. Now, when you send a Loop Component, everyone in that email can edit the, it in line um, and see the changes instantly. So this means you can actually collaborate right inside of an email message instead of having to open um, the file itself and go from there. Now, to give it a try, all you need to do is to compose a new email or reply to an existing one and insert a loop component um, via the toolbar or copy and paste components between um, email and Teams chats. Now this feature is rolling out to both Outlook on the web and the Outlook desktop from early May to mid-June. Now Microsoft Purview, normally this kind of information we would um, keep just for IT admins as it's pretty IT admin heavy. Now. The thing is, this is one of those wonderful Microsoft rebrands where they decide to take a whole bunch of products and stick them under one name and it looks really pretty. Um, so the reason why this is being disclosed to you is because you might see some places change. So where you may have gone to look at your quarantine messages, um, that might say something like Microsoft 325 Defender, but something else might now say um, Microsoft Purview instead of Microsoft 365 something. Don't need to remember this, don't need to act on it or do anything, just Now, Word for the Web, if you've ever used the transcription uh, feature, the limit was previously 300 minutes per user per month. Uh, if you haven't, it's actually a free way to transcribe audio um, from files or just use it for dictation. Um, you can actually now uh, transcribe unlimited minutes of uploaded audio using Word for the Web transcription. However, your IT department will need to enable this. So if you need more than 300 minutes per month, ask for it to be um, uplifted. Uh, this is actually available right now. Now, authors of SharePoint pages and news will be able to access section templates from inside of the plus menu in a new tab um, next to the sections tab, and that can be utilized when authoring SharePoint pages. Um, now, users will be able to choose and add templates at the section level instead of just at the page level. Um, although users will still have access to add blank sections as well, um, Microsoft has created six templates to make section design easier. So these templates include uh, fixed aspect ratios on the image web part to automatically keep images uh, within a template looking consistent uh, with one another. Um, however, this can be overridden when adding, oh, sorry, editing an image. Um, and also once elements are added to the canvas, they can be added and deleted just like manually added section elements. Um, but now you have more sleek and inspirational um, starting points. This is rolling out from late April to late May. Now, while Mike's, uh, My Analytics is uh, now known and visible in some places as Viva Insights, most of the controls are actually still available in the My Analytics settings page. Um, so to that end, Microsoft is cleaning things up a bit uh, in that the settings will be grouped in order to clean up the page and the briefing email will now be added instead of requiring you to visit the Cortana settings page. Um, this is just in time for people actually know what the hell Cortana is who don't play Halo but are watching the Halo TV show. Um, now Microsoft will remove that branding from within My Analytics and Viva Insights and Briefing and all those places. 
Um, now this is rolling out to early May to late June. And lastly, if you haven't uh, yet signed into the OneDrive Sync client on your Windows or Mac device, or your IT admin hasn't configured it to happen automatically for you, tsk tsk, they should have, um, then good news. Now with this new update um, on Windows, users who are signed into the device using their um, Azure Active Directory or Microsoft 365 account, as opposed to like a local network account, uh, will see the OneDrive folder start synchronizing automatically based on your Microsoft 365 account credentials. Whereas for Mac users, this will happen if they've signed into another Microsoft app such as Office, Teams, or Edge. Uh, this is rolling out mid to late July, so now you don't have to worry about signing in and IT can cover their tracks. Over in Microsoft Teams, pretty short one this week. Uh, participants who join Microsoft Teams meetings as anonymous users will now be able to turn on and view live captions, cut captions, and captions spoken in other uh, languages on the uh, Microsoft Teams meetings on the desktop client. This is available now. And that's it for keeping in sync with Microsoft 365 for this week.